This is the first time that we are organizing such a large scale undergraduate conference at Central European University. And so it is in many ways an experiment. Um, when we started to plan this conference and to advertise it, we did not know what to expect. But the feedback was quite enthusiastic. We received a, a huge number of applications from all around the world. We in the end accepted 70 students who are attending the conference now, coming from 40 countries. It's an exciting few days for us because it's the first time that the History Department and the Medieval Studies Department have organized this conference specifically for undergraduates. At CEU, we pride ourselves on having a diverse range of students in every incoming class, and so this is our attempt to sort of share our expertise in comparative empires and nation building with other students who are interested in similar topics and to sort of give them a chance to experience our university, but also a chance to present their own research in a, in a sort of stimulating forum. Uh, I've been really impressed with the conference thus far. Uh, it's been a great experience being able to meet with so many students from all kinds of backgrounds, all different countries and so forth. Uh, it really gives a taste of the world, so to speak. Uh, yeah, it's just been really fantastic. So. I really like to participate in this conference because it's really uh, fascinating to exchange the ideas of how people, how students uh, think about their uh, each uh, themes because it's really uh, um, interesting to know how are the uh, different um, positions and different plans um, um, uh, communicate with each other. And I think it's a great time to be here. National identity is a historical construction and within the um, tools of this conference we can just trace uh, how, how it was made and think about how it would operate in the future and would it influence somehow our lives or, or not, or it will be blurred. So this is still the topic of interest. I think that within um, the scholarly environment we all agree that uh, nations are constructs, uh, historical constructs, but on the other hand, um, they work because we believe in them. Um, that means um, that um, they also operate, they function as the framework in, uh, with which our world is organized. Nowadays, there are a lot of spheres that uh, really connect to the history of empire and nationalism and the uh, um, previous uh, ideas of global themes. Uh, there's why there are a lot of uh, questions that are really connected to this sphere. Uh, yes, when I'm here around all these people, not just from Europe, but from all over the world, I do feel very much like a global citizen, but I am unaware that we are in fact a very, very small portion of the population. In general, I think the main obstacle to creating transnational identity in Europe or anywhere else really at this point is that there's too much of a top-down initiative rather than bottom-up. And I don't think we can make much progress until we change that. And until we do, there's probably going to be a lot of nationalist backlashes like what we're seeing throughout Europe today. I think it's it's catching up with the times a little bit. You have states like Germany and other France and so forth that focus on uh, multiculturalism and so forth. So uh, it's becoming a little bit more geographic rather than cultural and perhaps for the better. But I, it's definitely evolving. I'm not sure what uh, the nation or nationalism quite means today. So. Like coming to conclusion, the the uh, role of national identity is still very important, not only in cultural terms, but also in um, political uh, issues. We still need to analyze it, especially within the frame of this conference, for example, when, where we can consider this issue from uh, different approaches. It is exactly experiences like these conferences which show that communication across nations, across cultural boundaries, is something which is very well possible. People who are here at this conference are 
Russians and Americans talking to each other. So we see that, at least on a small scale, um, transnational society can emerge and can function. The challenge, of course, would be to, to transfer such small-scale global society um, to, to the global scene. Um, that's, of course, admittedly a huge challenge.